Today you want to hold off before jumping into this new tech. Intel's next gen monster sucks 1500 watts and Nvidia GPU got a big upgrade and we get our first look at Ryzen 10,000. Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Okay, it's new time and first up for today, new technologies, new standards almost always come with new problems. And unfortunately, the DP80 DisplayPort 2.1 is no exception. For those who don't know, the first ever 80 gigabit DisplayPort 2.1 monitor was recently released. As you can see right here, we are talking 4K refresh rates up to 240 Hertz. And that monitor is, as you can see, the Aorus F032U2P. Well, just recently, Hardware Unboxed, or actually this is a different channel, but basically the same thing, Monitors Unboxed, tested that new monitor. And shortly after that, they actually released a video that kind of went over one major issue with it. For those who don't know, of course, DisplayPort 2.1, we are talking about the full 80 gigabit per second mode, otherwise known as UHBR20. And this mode basically allows you to get higher frame rates with 4K, as you can see right here, up to 4K 320 hertz or 8K 90 hertz. So this is obviously just a faster implementation for higher refresh rates on higher resolution monitors. Well, what they found out as you can see right here, it says the official list of DisplayPort 2.1 cables doesn't go beyond 1.2 meters. For those in the US, you likely already know that one meters is just over three feet. So obviously that's a little bit more than that, but for anyone with any serious setup, you likely know that that's definitely not enough. Luckily, as they state down here, Visa is currently working on active DisplayPort 2.1 DP80 cable specs, which will hopefully solve this problem. But as of now, that's gonna be a pretty major hurdle, but that's not the only one. Given the fact that this is so new, none, not NVIDIA's RTX 40 GPUs or AMD's RX 7000 GPUs support UHBR20 mode. Actually, the 40 series doesn't support DisplayPort 2. anything, and as of right now, the only thing that does support this is the professional, the Radeon Pro 7000 series. Basically, if you saw this monitor and you were getting a little excited about it, I would definitely hold off before making any kind of purchases. But first, I seriously can't stress this enough. If you haven't been to Micro Center yet, just go, honestly. While they sponsored today's video, they were the place I went to get parts for my first ever PC build. And they've just gotten better over the years. The way I usually describe it is a PC gamer's heaven. Because it's a physical store with everything you could possibly want for your PC build, so you can actually see what you're getting. Let's just say they have a wall of just motherboards, an aisle of power supplies, one parts for a custom water cooling build, they've got tons of fittings for that too. They flat out have it all. And today they've launched their new Micro Center News, where you can get the latest reviews or comprehensive guides and tutorials from PC gaming to troubleshooting. So the next time you need to do some research on tech, check out Micro Center down in the description below. And next up for today, while talking new tech, Intel's next-gen Falcon Shores GPU, XPU, APU, whatever you want to call it, this bad boy is set to come with the successor to Ponzi Vecchio. Remember that giant GPU that Intel made a little while back? Yeah, this comes with the successor to that, as well as a monster CPU. And all of this adds up to 1500 watts, at least if this story ends up being correct. As you can see, it says this immense power consumption will require advanced cooling solutions. From what I've seen, they're not going to offer any kind of air-cooled solution at all. Either way, you can see it ensures that it operates efficiently and safely. Intel's partners may turn to liquid cooling or even full immersion liquid cooling. And get this, they're not just going to have an issue with cooling. They're also going to have a major issue powering this bad boy. You can see it says Intel may need to develop proprietary hardware modules or a new open accelerator module spec to support such extreme power levels as the current OEM 2.0 tops out at around a thousand watts. To give you an idea of just how big of a deal this is, Nvidia's own Monster B200 accelerator only draws a thousand watts. Well, technically it's rated for a thousand watts, but some people seem to say that it really draws more like 1200 watts, but still that's nowhere near 
1500. Basically, both CPUs and GPUs seem to continue on their trend of needing more and more wattage. Before long, you're going to need a nuclear power plant in your backyard just to play video games. Of course, this isn't for gaming or anything like that. This is an accelerator, but still, things do seem to be trickling down to gaming GPUs as well. And next up, while talking gaming GPUs, some pretty interesting stuff just happened. As you can see right here, it says, recently a small competition took place in Brazil between Palo Games and Tech Lab teams. The former is known for various GPU repairs, often featuring non-standard memory mods, while the latter is an overclocking team renowned for numerous world records. Either way, the competition involved equipping the 4070 Ti Super with faster memory and overclocking it to its limits. And the results are extremely interesting. As you can see right here, they did this in Superposition 8K benchmark, and the 4080 stock gets around 8,525 points, while the stock 4070 Ti gets 7,212 points. Well, first, with 24 gigabit per second memory, they were able to beat the RTX 4080 at 8,870 points, and they actually upped it even more with Tech Lab, getting it up to 26 gigabits per second, for 9,133 points, and this bad boy actually beats out by quite a bit an RTX 4080 Super. Ultimately, I really think this goes to show just how important not only the amount of memory you have is, but also memory speed. And we've actually seen this before, that really does seem to be at least a bit of a bottleneck to newer generation GPUs. With that said, I don't suggest trying this at home. You aren't just soldering on new memory, taking off the old. They actually have to make some modifications to the board itself. Still, this is definitely really interesting, and I think it goes to show just how much goes into determining what a GPU has and what it doesn't, price to performance, whether it's worth it, whether it's not, and really just the fact that you can make your GPU even faster, though, like I said, I would not suggest trying this. And lastly for today, we just got some new word on AMD's not only next-gen Zen 5, don't forget that Zen 5 is set to be what comes with their next-gen Ryzen CPUs, but also Zen 6, meaning we could be looking at Ryzen 10,000. But really quickly, before I actually get into this leak, I want to kind of quickly go over how AMD's CPUs are structured. As you can see right here, we have Zen 4 and Zen 4C. Zen 4C being AMD's efficiency cores, although they really are, unlike Intel, pretty much identical to regular Zen 4. They're just smaller, they have less cache, things like that. But anyway, Zen 4 is comprised up, Zen 4 and Zen 4C are comprised of CCDs. These are these little modules that each of them for Zen 4 and Zen 4C have eight cores per CCD. Now this says it's 16 cores per CCD, but not really, they're sort of separated into two CCXs, each with eight cores. Either way, as you can see with this one, uh, Epic Genoa, it has 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, times two, 12, eight core CCDs. While with Zen 4C, oh, and that makes for a total of 96 cores. While with Zen 4C, there are less total CCDs, but there's 16 core CCDs. Sort of, like I said, it's really technically eight per CCX, and there's just two to make up one CCD, but either way, that gets them up to 128 cores. Well, Zen 5 has a bit of a surprise up their sleeve. Starting things off, as you can see right here, this is a leak sort of going over what we've seen from other leaks for Zen 5, Zen 5C, as well as Zen 6. And there's some new leaks, I'll get to that in just a second. But as you can see from what we've seen, Zen 5, this is of course for Epic, but this will potentially go down to Ryzen as well, I'll get to that in just a second. But Zen 5, they're planning to have upwards of 16 CCDs all with still eight cores per CCD. Apparently Zen 5 is set to be smaller than Zen 4, so they're able to cram even more CCDs on this chip. And this makes for a total, what's wild is that last time they required Zen 4C to get 128 cores, while now regular Zen 5 can get to 128. But Zen 5C ends up coming with 12 CCDs, but with 16 cores per CCD. 
And as you can see, that's only one CCX. Remember, Zen 4C, like I said, had two CCXs that made up one CCD. Wasn't really 16 cores per CCD, it sort of was, but those were separated into their own CCDs called CCX. While Zen 5C actually comes with 16 cores. And when we look at known leaker Everest, who actually shared this, you can see this is engineering samples that are floating around for their next gen epic. And as you can see, this right here, 12 plus one, 192 cores, which means this is absolutely correct. 12 CCDs, 16 cores per CCD for a whopping 192 cores. But, that is just Zen 5. When we move over to Zen 6, things get even more interesting. As you can see, this is a new leak from Kepler, who, as you know, has been a very accurate leaker in the past. Either way, he claims that Zen 6 has three CCDs, one with eight cores, one with 16, and one with 32. Now, that 32 is likely Zen 6C, but... If this ends up being true, that 16 core could end up coming to Ryzen, which means even if they stick with the same two CCDs up to two CCDs for Ryzen, that would mean that Ryzen 10,000 could get all the way up to 32 cores. And of course, this is a long time coming just because we've seen Intel actually surpass AMD in terms of core count, which was not something we'd seen for quite a long time. Though, not only that, don't forget that AMD could end up doing something like adding, say, 132 core and 116 core because just like Intel, AMD does look like they're moving to combine efficient cores with performance cores. With that said, some people do think that eight cores is still for Ryzen with 16 for something like Threadripper, which might be understandable, but given the fact that they are adding a third, maybe that 16 core is for higher end Ryzen while the eight core is for lower end Ryzen, I'm not sure, but this is definitely getting interesting and Ryzen 10,000 is certainly something to look forward to. So while that does it for today, do you think Ryzen 10,000 could make use of that 16 core CCD or maybe even 32 cores? Would you have use for something like that? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Micro Center down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.